much guys. Yeah, this is Matthew from Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I'm CTO of Standard Microgrid. Um, we're a company that's headquartered in um, in California, but we've got um, we've got a branch here in Johannesburg where we do manufacturing of power systems, and then we primarily operate in um, Zambia where we operate a rural microgrid utility. And is this little panel visible on my screen? Should I just move it out of the way or is that not visible? Um, I'll just move it to the side. Um, <clears throat> so I'll start off with just a little in introduction to the company. We were founded in 2012. Um, the, my colleague um, Brian was doing some research into uh, renewable energy in Tanzania and um, came across what he thought was a novel way to electrify rural communities. Um, a, a guy called Edicio, he was a farmer in a really far off part of Tanzania, had dammed up a river outside his house, made a tiny dam, um, connected up some bicycle parts and uh, made a small tiny hydro power system. I think he was generating about 400 watts um, using sort of a lesson that he'd learned at school on a using a bike dynamo. He'd somehow managed to get the power up to 220 volts and strung lines to all of his neighbors and shops and basically to the whole community. Um, so like he had some people connecting up light bulbs and a couple of people with TVs and he knew exactly how much the system could support. And he knew when um, when somebody was using more than they'd paid him for because everybody's lights dimmed. So um, basically what he said is uh, for maybe 50 cents a month, um, you can have a light bulb and for $2 a month, you can have a TV. And um, he had so much social capital in the community that he could um, he could basically keep track of, of everybody's power consumption and make sure that nobody stressed the system, nobody overloaded the system and, and caused things to uh, to be stressed. So um, what we've basically done at Standard Microgrid is to is to recreate that, but take the onus of people switching their appliances on and off away from customers. So um, I'll show, just bring up a picture here. This is an example of what our power system looks like. We've, we've tried to standardize everything as much as possible to reduce idiosyncratic costs. Um, it's a 12 kilowatt solar um, array, containerized. So we put down the container, build the power system, and um, we've got about 12 kilowatts of solar there. And then we've got batteries and an inverter inside the container. And we build a distribution grid out to the community. So these are really rural communities in Zambia. They've typically got no, uh, no access to the national grid. Um, we are coming in and replacing candles and kerosene and um, like sort of uh, torch batteries. Um, we connect about up to 150 households from one of these systems and we provide AC power. And the real um, sort of smarts of the business is what you see on this lady's lap here. So that's, we call that the switch. And it's basically a smart meter that um, controls how much power customers use and when they use it. So each customer has an individual customized plan for exactly the appliances that they have. So maybe they have two light bulbs well, um, and they choose to operate the light bulbs between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. because that's the only time they need lights. And then they have a um, price per day or per week or per month to run that plan. So they'll buy prepaid power for, for a day or for a week and they're guaranteed to get that power. So Basically, what we try to do is have a standardized um, amount, a standardized supply of power because we don't have any generator backup and fit as much load inside that load curve as possible. Um, obviously, we can't control the clouds, so we there's, there's some variation every day, but generally we know how much power we can generate in a day um, and we try and optimize people's programs around that. And um, so we yeah, sell prepaid time of day appliance level energy services to about 150 customers per site. We've got six sites operational currently and should have 10 by the end of the year. And we are um, in the process of 
deploying 150 power systems throughout Zambia. So that would uh, result in about 22,000 um, households being connected. Um, <clears throat> so the real uh, the real trick is that we don't have anybody in the communities to manage things. So it's all got to be done remotely. And we train up local women to be agents who resell power on our behalf. So they buy power in bulk from us, uh, resell it and um, manage people's programs. And the way that we manage programs, it used to be that somebody would want to change their program. Um, they'd come to us or they'd send us a message and say, I'd like to add two hours to my light plan. And we would go to a program like Homer, where we had um, where we had the whole system programmed in, and we would say, if we change one person's program, what does that do to the to the overall model? Is it still acceptable? If yes, then we would change their program and push a new program um, to the mobile app, and that would be uh, that would be propagated into the system. But obviously, that's not scalable. So. Um, what we've done. I just kind of got some screenshots here and, and I'm not the technical person who programmed all of this, but um, so we we basically build a um, we build a model of the system in uh, in SAM specific to each uh, each power system. Though they are standardized, there are small differences. We use lithium batteries so we can scale those up in 6.5 kilowatt hour increments. So some systems we have three, some we have five um sort of server rack sized batteries um up to about 30 kilowatt hours so uh, we have specific sam model which we generate for each site um and then we as uh, nick was showing earlier we export an lk file uh, script which we load into our sort of web app um and this is more or less what the system looks like these are the things that we track is battery state of charge um, lifetime electricity load. So we look that we, 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 we check that we're not, um, exceeding the system capacity too much. And then we've got, um, battery life. So when the battery capacity drops, um, below sort of 70%, we know that we're going to have to look at replacing those batteries at some point. So you can see the battery curve down here. Um, and then this is more or less how it looks for, for our agent. Um, and they can see for this customer, um, they've got their current program, which includes an indoor light at seven watts. So th you've got to understand these are really low, um, uh, like in inexperienced energy users. So they're using very little amounts of power. Um, they've got an indoor light, which is seven watts goes on. Well, this is a 24 hour a day program. So th this is available for 24 hours a day. They've got a security light, which is five watts and is, goes on at eight in, in the afternoon and off at 12 at night. And then they've got a radio from three in the afternoon until 10. Um, and they want to change their plan. So the microgrid manager, who's the, the agent in the community, goes and chooses a new plan um, in this app. And then what it does is submits this new plan to a web app, which we've built. Um, the web app has access to uh, basically the plans of every customer on that grid. So what it can do by piecing all this information together, um, it builds an overall load for a typical day, um, which is which is which is like basically like this um, for the whole community. So we can see indoor lights uh, in the night and in the evening, and then we've got fridges running throughout the day and TVs sort of from mid morning and through the afternoon to the evening. Um, so it builds this kind of model of what the load of the entire community looks like for the whole day. And then, um, and submits that to that site's specific SAM script um, and outputs a whole bunch of variables, which we, which we look at and compare. Um, Okay, so what we get from, from Sam, um, the outputs that we look at is uh, the capacity shortfall for the year. So what percentage of the year um, our, our supply will be unable to meet the demand. 
Um, and, and we set an acceptable limit for that. We say, uh, we set that for each site. We could normally, uh, the default is 1%. So if there's, uh, if we're unable to meet the demand 1% of the year, then we say that program isn't accepted, reject the program. We do the same for battery degradation. So, um, this took a little bit of work, but we figured out how much, um, battery cycling would impact the, the lifetime of the batteries and um, the what, what the web app does is run, or runs it through SAM, looks at how much, uh, what impact the change in that plan is going to have on the battery life. And if it changes battery life expectancy um, beyond an unacceptable level, it'll also decline the program. So I think we've normally got it set at uh eighty percent within three years, for example. So if if the plan pushes the battery life beyond so that it will drop below eighty percent within three years, it will decline the program, otherwise it'll accept it. And then if um if the plan will exceed either the overall system capacity, which is like the, the eight kilowatt inverter, or the line, so the distribution line which that customer is on it'll decline the program or the capacity of the switch which is the smart meter similarly declines the program and that's how we've been able to sort of have a have a power system that we can um, connect up 150 people give everybody a very basic plan so uh, the starting point is one light bulb for 12 hours a day and then let because the the communities are such they've never had power before nobody's got appliances yet so we have to sort of allow some headroom for demand to grow and through using um, sam embedded in a web app we're able to let customers um they, the system self manages so some people upgrade their programs and upgrade their programs until it reaches a an acceptable limit um at which point we sort of have to relook at it and see what metric needs. Maybe we need to add a battery um, so that we're not um, exceeding the available nighttime energy, or we need to add capacity on the line or whatever, whatever the case may be. But um, Sam helps us to allow the load to grow organically without input from any of us. And then, um, so this is basically what what the load looks like. So this is an example of a site um, over the past week, more or less. Um, and this is a load profile. Uh, the, the orange is current. So that's showing um, a typical day. And um, this has all been sort of monitored, controlled by Sam um, to look like this. You can see it matches quite closely to the sort of expected maybe it's a different plan but that's basically what we go for is very predictable demand so that we can not overstress our systems but fit um the the expected demand for each day very nicely within the available energy um so yeah that's basically it i wanted to also just thank the nrl team for supporting us so much in figuring out how to do this and uh, on various other things which they've helped us with over the years and, and for inviting us to be on this webinar. So thanks very much, guys. Well, yeah, thanks a lot, Matt, for the great presentation and for telling us about um, about what you have done with Sam. And I think that personally that's a really great story and just a really great mission that you guys have. And um, it, it's really promising that you're expanding to so many um, new power systems and so many new households. And so that's an application that um, yeah, we haven't thought about a ton. Um, we're often thinking of on the utility scale and kind of large systems, but kind of the impact to to people that don't have access to those utility scale systems is, is really interesting to hear. Um, and so while we wait for any questions to come in. I don't see any, um, but I, I guess one question that I would have would be, 
within your usage of Sam's battery model, have you run into any limitations or anything that you've had to work around with a custom workflow or or any recommendations you'd have as far as improving that model? Um, I think time's going to tell. We we haven't really run the systems long enough to see um, what the the predicted um, battery usage, how, how that maps to actual. Um, so yeah, at the moment, everything is working as planned. Um, and one of the systems has just become fully capacitated and Sam's basically saying, uh, like declining requests. So we need to look at where we, where we bend on that one, whether we um, increase the load on the system or whether we can try and incentivize customers to change their, uh, to change their plans. But basically, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything um, that we've had to adapt in our thinking with regards to the battery modeling workflow. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be really interesting to do some retrospective analysis once the systems are old enough to where you have to start replacing capacity and... Um, and yeah, for sure. Um, it, it's It's pretty interesting to... Uh, to reach the point where we have to say to people, you need you need to start buying uh, more efficient TVs and shifting your consumption back into the day, so that we can allow more people to have power. Because that's ultimately the aim: is to have the, the most uh, the the most amount of value per kilowatt hour that we deliver. And we consider high value to be lighting and refrigeration television to a degree, and communications to so cell phone charging. And and we want to give that to the absolute most number of people possible. So yeah, incentivizing people to, uh, through pricing and through uh, through other kinds of incentives, getting people to consume just as much as they need is, is an interesting challenge.